Ladies and gentlemen, a new snapshot for Minecraft Java Edition 1.16, the Nether update has arrived. Here's 20w15a bringing to you a new Nether biome, a completely new family of stone material blocks, a new banner pattern, new Nether soundtracks, and a whole host of other things. My name is Sliced Lime. I'm here to guide you through all the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 20w15a. Let's start with the world generation because there is a new biome in the nether, it is the basalt deltas. This biome is full of basalt columns and the lava deltas, and the air is filled with white ash. Magma cubes spawn frequently in the basalt deltas, and there is a new block type here, blackstone. And with that in mind, let's move on to blocks and items in this version, because the new blackstone is a new stone type family, which exists as both regular polished and polished brick variants. In addition to being a new nice building material, you can also use blackstone for crafting, where it can be used just like cobblestone to craft furnaces and stone tools, and as a matter of fact, you can even mix and match. There are many types of blackstone blocks. There are blackstone full blocks, slabs, stairs and walls, polished blackstone blocks, slabs, stairs, walls, buttons and pressure plates, polished blackstone brick blocks, slabs, stairs and walls, cracked polished blackstone bricks, chiseled polished blackstone, as well as gilded blackstone. This one is a gold ore like block, but it works much like gravel in that it has a chance of dropping the block and a chance of dropping gold nuggets when broken. As with gravel, silk touch and fortune affect the drop rates. Gilded blackstone is currently unobtainable in survival. But those weren't all the new blocks, oh no no, there are many more. There are chiseled nether bricks, cracked nether bricks and the quartz bricks added in this version as well. Another new block type is the Soul Campfire. This one is crafted with a Soul Sand or a Soul Soil block instead of the coal and creates a blue flamed campfire. And speaking of that, you can now also craft Soul Torches using Soul Sand, not just Soul Soil. One final addition to this version, there's now a Piglin Banner Pattern. This Piglin Banner Pattern is also currently unobtainable in survival mode. Let's talk about gameplay changes. Nether vegetation, that is sprouts, roots, vine, fungus, warts and wart blocks, are now compostable. In terms of chances, nether sprouts, weeping vines and twisting vines have a 50% chance of adding a layer when used. Crimson fungi, warped fungi, nether warts, crimson roots and warped roots have a 65% chance of adding a layer. And nether wart blocks and warped wart blocks have an 85% chance of adding a layer. Walls will now connect to more things and they will also create posts for more things when those things are placed above. That goes for iron bars, glass panes and even sea pickles. A fix for respawn anchors, if you clicked it in the overworld or the end, it could create ghost blocks that is fixed in this snapshot. Hoes are now the appropriate tool for breaking leaves. You can still use shears of course, but hoes are now a fast tool for breaking leaves if you don't want the leaf drop itself. A whole boatload of dispenser changes in this version. You can now use dispensers to equip saddles, horse armors, carpets onto llamas, chests onto llamas, donkeys and mules. You can also use them to shear mushrooms or snow golems. And finally a dispenser fix. A dispenser pointed into a respawn anchor that is already fully charged will now drop the glowstone item when activated. Let's move on to mob changes and fixes. If you used a spawn egg on an adult mob spawning a baby mob, then that baby was always of the same variant that is fixed in this snapshot. Striders when out of lava will now turn blue to indicate their chill. Strider spawning has also changed so they can now spawn above the lava oceans and they will never spawn inside underground lava pockets anymore. A bunch of fixes have been done to pathfinding. Non-fire resistant mobs will now try to avoid walking into fire properly and mobs will now also avoid walking on magma blocks and on lit campfires. Baby hoglins and baby zoglins have had a bunch of fixes to them. They no longer use the same attack damage as adults and baby hoglins no longer drop loot. Zoglins are now considered an undead mob, meaning for instance that they are weak to smite. Piglin fixes. Curse of Binding now also affects piglins. They can no longer take off items with the Curse of Bindings. 
Piglins with full inventories would still pick up new items that is also fixed in this version. Some user interface fixes in this version, there are some new chat options for accessibility. They are line spacing which spread out the chat a bit more and make it easier to read. As well as chat delay. With chat delay enabled there's a minimum time between chat lines from other players appearing in chat. If there are lines that are not yet shown then a message appears at the bottom of the chat to indicate how many lines are still to be displayed. In addition to that, some user interface strings in the Spanish translation had gotten mixed up. Sound changes in this version. A fix has been done to fish noises sometimes being much louder than they should be. And then of course there are the three new tracks of Nether Music. These tracks have been composed by Lena Rain, who also for instance composed the music to Celeste. The tracks are Rubido, playing in the Nether Wastes. So Below playing in Soul Sand Valleys and in Basalt Deltas, and Chrysopoeia playing in Crimson Forests. Warped Forests are silent places with no music. Note that the old nether music is still around and can play, but the new music will play more frequently. If you want to hear these tracks then don't worry, you have already been listening to them in the background of this video. But if you want to listen to them in full, separate videos will be up on this channel shortly and when they are there will be links to them in the cards on this video. One more sound thing to mention is that with a new basalt delta biome there is also new basalt delta ambience. couple of visual fixes in this version. If you were inside of a transparent block then you would get a fully opaque grey texture that has been fixed in this version. And when bartering with a piglin by right clicking you now display the proper hand animation. Technical changes in this version. Tab completion has been improved when entering resource locations in a command. It will now match any part after an underscore character. So for instance typing bed and hitting tab completion will now tab complete not only bedrock but also lime underscore bed. There's a new particle type in this version, it's called white underscore ash. There are two new block tags in this version, one called campfires which contains the obvious things and the guarded by piglins which contains all the blocks that piglins get angry if you break. There are three new item tags in this version, furnace materials containing all of the materials that can be used to craft a furnace and stone tool materials containing all of the materials that can be used to craft stone tools and those are of course the stone parts of the tool. Finally soul fire base blocks which contains the blocks that burn with soul fire and thus are ingredients to soul torches and soul campfires. For recess pack makers there are some texture changes in this version. The strider textures have changed formats. It now has less wasted space in it so keep an eye out for that. There's also a new texture for the strider in its cold format, it is strider underscore cold.png. Finally, some stability and performance fixes. This version contains mob and pathfinding related optimizations as well as some structure related optimizations. It fixes a freeze in the game when you try to use the return portal in the end if you had your spawn point set in the end, as well as a bunch of crash fixes. Those were all the changes in Minecraft Snapshot 20W15A. If you want to try this version keep in mind that snapshots are testing versions and do it on a backup of your world or on a test world. Any world that you upgrade to a snapshot can never be downgraded to a previous version again. If you want to try it out but you don't know how to then click on the link in the card on the video right now or in the video description that'll take you to a tutorial video about how to get and play a Minecraft snapshot. That was all I had for you this time, I hope you found this update video useful and if you did please help me out in return, leave a like and share it with your friends. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest Minecraft news then please subscribe to this channel where I make update videos for every new snapshot pre-release or release of Minecraft. And don't forget to hit that bell icon to get notified when new videos are out. My name is Slime. thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.